we mentioned Margot Wells straight away there. Yes. Because that, a woman. A I legend. Sh- absolute legend. And I, you, I you single-handedly have, you know. will put down my career is where it is and what it was because of her. Really? People say who had the biggest impact in your career. And, you know, people talk mums, dads, take you to Margot Wells. Yeah. And so genuinely talk to me about Margot Wells because... About Margot. Absolute legend. Um, I love her. She... She is a coach that wears a heart on her sleeve. Um, obviously, being a woman and Scottish, and you know, again, doesn't really fit into the rugby mold. So she's never really been accepted within the environments or whatever it is. Hated by Irish. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Remember I, I, the whole reason why I started seeing her was um, my friend Josh Bowman was playing for Wellington, and I went to watch him at the in Part Sevens, and I wasn't allowed to play because I was signed up at Wasp. But I was just watching him, and he ran down the wing. And I was like, this kid was never quick. Like, what on earth is this? This guy's dusting it down the wing. So afterwards, I speak to him. I say, like, what are you doing? Like, why? What? How have you got this quick? Like, it was, it was, you see what it's like. It's that much of a difference. It's so shocking. I wanted to know. So he goes to me, oh, everyone's taking the piss out of me. I've been seeing this lady called Margot Wells. She's over there. And then I was like, can you introduce me now, please? Like, I've still got another year and a half of school left. I met her, I can't remember, like, I remember, obviously, I was I was a pretty confident kid when I was younger, so I would say whatever I felt. Um, I wasn't that conformist. And Indeed. I went up to her, and I, I can't remember, I said some sort of cheesy, confident line, and she absolutely loved it. I can't remember the specifics. She knows it, I don't. Yeah. And then I ended up training with her, like, for, I think, like, the last part of my schooling year. Um, I would get on the train at like five o'clock from Croydon to Guildford. I'd get there for about half six and I'd get home for about nine. Did that three, four times a week. And at the end of my school year, Ian McGeekin was like, what are you doing for off season? Is it going to be your last five, six weeks off you have for a long time? When I'm going to go train with Margot Wells. And he was like, no, 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 I don't want you to do that. Take the time off. Take the time off. And I was like, all right, Geech, I'll take the time off. What did I do? I went and trained with Margot Wells six times a week, six times a week for the whole six weeks, came back and I was beating like Josh and Paul Saki in speed tests and me and Geech was like, you've been seeing Margot, haven't you? I was like, yep. He was like, you can keep doing it. <laughs> like, <'cause> you, <laughs> coaches, don't, coaches don't want you to have your own trainer or have your own on the autonomy and the conformist thing. It's like they feel if players have too much disruption from the outside that it will disrupt the inside internal environment. You know, I had to... I felt like I had to go over and beyond to be allowed to train with Margot. Just the fact that the belief you can get quicker, get sharper and train like that, train purposefully, like with, with a directive and, and, a, and a vision and then achieving it, like the confidence it gives you. You, f- you feel what that confidence feels like when yeah. you suddenly go from being X speed to faster. You're like, yo, you feel like things are limitless then. Because you can get better, you can improve. It's like the start of that. And she gave me that at the beginning, yeah, for sure. Margot Wells. Legend. When I was a kid, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> when I was a kid, I, I was going to train. He was turning up, James Haskell was there, like Josh Lucy. Was he there for a bit? I think uh, Saki, Delali, Saki, Saki was, was there. there. Delali was back in the day. Paul Doran Jones. Dozer like, was. They, like, but I'm like, oh, I genuinely believe that got kids that are young that go and train and they're suddenly in an environment where there's people like that they're like fuck I can make it if I'm and they see that and I yeah. think that's a big part of it as well because I know that is it Sinclair Carl Sinclair yeah he's a big, big advocate yeah. yeah Carl's there yeah he's there yeah she's he's... fully changed his physical appearance and his whole movement so she's still doing it now yeah and that's oh. and that's someone who is a position where people were like you can't make a difference with a prop it's like well she has yeah. he's more explosive more dynamic you know more agile I forgot to say it a couple of weeks ago, but Haskell had a deal with her where he, she wasn't allowed to train in another back row in the Premiership. Of course, that. Haskell had that he deal. He had a deal with her. <laughs> <laughs> that he was sandbagging yeah. everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> just, like, make me, just make me the best that I can possibly <laughs> yeah. be. Anyway, you can't train anyone else in the Premiership. Literally, like, had a deal with that. Yeah. So she didn't, she didn't train anyone for ages. And then obviously, like, her voice probably got too much for him and he was just like, I'm not, you know, he left. <laughs> he stopped training. Yeah. Funny. Let's quickly talk about the rather controversial new 
tackle law that's come in, been oh, implemented yeah. by the RFU. That's unprepared. Where, you know, from this season onwards, for those who don't know, all non-professional rugby, uh, tackle height will be lowered to the waist, triggering kind of cry from current players, perhaps from you guys, um, you know, ex-players, referees, Nigel Owens coming out. Uh, ben Stokes, and if you saw, England, I know. yeah, saying, Stokesy man, <laughs> yeah, yeah, waving right. it in, saying it would lead to more uh, concussions, and it's in fact more Good dangerous. Uh, Danny, start start with you, somebody who uh, prefers attack over defence, but also you had a, obviously your issues with concussion. Um, what have you made of this proposed radical change? I don't know. I don't. It's not. I don't make that much of it. I don't. I don't really know the thought process behind this, a lot of the decisions that they make. It just seems like another one in the cycle of of decisions that are slightly perplexing. Is it going to be a good or bad thing? I don't know. We don't know yet. But I guess the feel is that uh, they just make fairly rash decisions to try and... The feel of it is that they're doing it to, because of all the concussion stuff and they're suddenly yeah. going, oh, fuck, here's a quick fix. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's do this. Without fucking actually thinking it through. Yeah. You say you're prepared. I'll be, what, what, go. So I'm what's, gonna, what's, let's what, let him lose. No, no, no. I want to know yeah, what, what your argument is. But no, I, I genuinely, right, waist. Where's your waist? Because <clears throat> everyone goes, eh, well, that's your hips. I think your waist is here. So yeah, I'm, it's like I'm with it. below I'm the going, navel, yeah. I'm going anything below my massive pecs. Fucking laughing. Really that. loose t-shirt. That's the Anything problem. Anything like below the nipple so flat. makes a bit more. But no, like, that's not what that's. That would be rib cage. So we're going below like, the waist. Would be like the navel. No, I understand. No, I don't. <laughs> right. Okay. So right now on Twitter, we've got massive reaction. Huge vitriol from everyone. Right. Crazy. All rugby players are sort of opposed to it. However, however, oh. since 2015, they've been recording data. Okay, and. At this point, the safest place to tackle is, as you said, round here at the rib cage, right? In France, in the community game, they had, I think it was three fatalities. It was very sad. So what they had to do was change the game completely. So, but the what, reason... But why were there fat- fatalities? Because of, because head, of head knocks. Because of brain injuries. We shouldn't but be called head knocks. But which, what, 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 what caused them? I don't know the specifics, but this it, would it. Been, this it, would been, it would have been brain trauma. I but that the... maybe not shoulder on head, maybe head on knee. Yeah, that, I think that is important. I don't know the question. Okay. I don't know the answer to that, but that is an important question. When they introduced the law in rugby here in the UK, they tried it in the championship in a, in a cup, I think. Yeah. This was a few years back, right? And it didn't work, as as all the um, all sort of the rugby players are saying. Oh, you're going to get more concussions. Because as I've been a tackler, I've always got concussed on a knee or a hit, like yeah. the, the hard pointers. And... I was like, yeah, that makes sense. And then I see this guy called Ross Tucker, a question of sport, quite an interesting guy. He's been doing so much of the data, sports scientist. He says that the likelihood of concussion is far higher when you're like, when there's the head, both heads occupy the same space. And that's just the, what the data tells you. Right. Um, and that's pretty, that's pretty conclusive. But this championship uh, trial, what the way it differed to the French one was because in the championship, you put this rule in, in a different cup, so the guys were changing between different sets of rules. So they were like, tackle below the waist, and then they were going back to the normal comp, and so you gotta give it time. Second up, the French rule differs in the fact that the partnering, the partnering like ball carrier has a part to play, so you'll never see the uh, the Tui Soba bump offs anymore. Ah, yeah, yeah you see, yeah. now that's what Fucking you've got to get You can tell around. you've had an hour and a half train ride here. Yeah, I know. First, so time ever, <laughs> first time he's ever come prepared. So that's what you've got to get your head around. You've got to get your head around one. If you want to change, if you want to make the game safer, you have to change it in in some ways a sad way. I agree. I, I, I enjoy yeah. that, that, that physical confrontation. But ultimately... If you want to meaningfully change it, I think they were thinking if we tackle at the waist, if they miss more, they only go so high. 